So traders, a quick uh, recap of my trading session today. Let's go through this real quickly. I've got a loser, sorry, a winner in uh, Ameritrade, almost $1,800. McDonald's a small loser, Schwab a small loser, long. McDonald's was short and ULTA a nice winner. So in total, I'm going to finish today up $1,700, which is okay. Okay for two winners and two losers. And just a quick, uh, you know, something really quick about this, you know, when I make good at my first two trades, like ULTA and Ameritrade, which were my two trades, the first thing you heard me say was, I'm going to reduce my size, tighten my stops, and I just don't go back to red territory. I had two failing trades here, as you can see here, but that cost me like $900. So I could have been higher, uh, $2,600 or so. That's That could have been much better, of course, but I could have had two additional winners too, or losers. I had losers. So if you, come, if you come to the point where you have two great trades and you're in green territory, you need to stay there. Let's go quickly over these trades and let's start with Ameritrade. Um, I'm going to talk about Ameritrade here while keeping Schwab here at the bottom, you see right here Schwab, because it's very important to talk about them together. I mentioned that earlier, I'm going to repeat it now. I posted Ameritrade for a short under 37.20, and that was somewhere around here. So as you can see, Ameritrade did come down, came all the way down under 36. So that was a $1.20 trade. I did not take it. I made a mistake there somewhere along the way and uh, took a partial, which actually took me out of the game. Um, I covered all of my short. Uh, that was a mistake. But again, I made nice. Uh, it was a nice trade for me, Ameritrade. Uh, it doesn't matter. The mistake I made doesn't matter here. What matters here is why I took the trade. Well, first, Ameritrade is down 21% right now. It was approximately the same place where I shorted it. But the real reason was, um, I thought Ameritrade and Schwab, I thought all of them would be quite dangerous today because the model again of the brokerage, the fact that they announced that they're not going to take any more commission doesn't mean they're going to lose money. In fact, it may, may mean they're going to make more money. Nobody knows. Well, people are cautious. Ameritrade is down 21%. Schwab is down 9%. Uh, so there may be a good opportunity here. I'm a bit cautious about this one, but then I make a quick decision. The decision I made to short Ameritrade under 37.20 was this. Before I took the Ameritrade trade, look at what happened to Schwab. It just cracked down under the lows right over here, and Ameritrade wasn't there yet. It was right over here somewhere. So Ameritrade did not break down yet, but Schwab did. So when you're trading kind of sister companies like that, when there's some kind of an industry news like this, you should be watching for sister companies like Schwab and Ameritrade, and you can add other. So the thing is, when you see one of them crashing down, that does not give you a 100% full, uh, you know, 100% successful trade. It just doesn't give you that. But it gives you a much better chance to succeed because you see what happened to Schwab and Ameritrade is likely to follow and that was a very nice trade. Um, second trade today was posted by Scott. That was the ULTA trade. I mean, take a look at ULTA now, it's up 5% and it was trending higher very clearly, pulled back down, came back all over to the highs, 266, I believe, was the 265 was the entry. That's the one Scott posted. We took that one with him. That's a beautiful technical formation. Nice cap with a lot of upside momentum after a pullback. I don't really need to discuss that one much. And take a look at what happened here. Beautiful, more than two points tar move. My target was two points. I took 180 or so. Stop loss was, was around. 2.2, no need to discuss stop loss, it didn't get there, but that was a beautiful, beautiful trade. Uh, later, I was asked about other trade with, uh, from other traders here, whether we should go long, maybe here or there. Well, you see, you don't have any more this momentum and you don't have any more this uh, beautiful technical formation at the beginning of the trading session. Look at the volume here and look at the volume there. 
So you see, the difference between this volume and that volume is huge. There will be people here who will follow and will look and will research and will find ULTA up 5% today and will look for a new high because just like you, they learned that when a stock is moving to a new high, it usually breaks out and breaks out strong. Take a look at these two green candles here. These are... Here, here is the volume. High volume on the breakout shows you a successful breakout. So we had the volume. Very happy to say that we took the partial right at the top, really right at the top, maybe 20 cents below, something like that, maybe a bit more. But out of the $2.20, that was a beautiful uh, partial. Sometimes I, I'm proud at my partials better than I am at my entries. In this trade, really, we had both of them. So now let's go to two of my losers. Uh, one of them was Schwab, SCHW, which I thought here should go higher. So I posted it over 38.50. I want to make sure it's getting out of this consolidation area. So 38.50 was here. It moved all the way up here. Well, not so much really, just 16 cents or so, maybe a bit more right over here did not give me enough chance for a partial. My risk was approximately 40 cents and then just started drifting sideways. When the stock is not doing what you expected it to do, there's no reason to hold on for it. So the more it went sideways, the tighter my stop was. Originally, it should have been under 36, uh, 38.10. I even considered 38 if it would have spiked down. And then I put it up to 38.10. Uh, 20 and then I moved at a relatively small loss 30 cents and again tighten your stop if the stock is not going your way now again fundamentally thinking I think that uh, Schwab just like other uh, brokers is not going to get hurt much about uh, with, with, with a new issue with with the brokerage uh, free trade and everything that uh, was discussed uh, today. So I think there will be a lot of buyers. I don't know, it doesn't always happen, of course. You can see that it's not at a breakdown point, really. It's at some kind of a support area, but I don't know, it failed. Definitely was a failing trade. My second failing trade was McDonald's and McDonald's right over here looked great. You see, right over here. That's where I posted it under 209 for short. So the entry point here was great. I mean, there's nothing wrong about McDonald's. At that time, the market was coming down. I think I see now that the Nasdaq already touched a new low. S&P did not. So at that time, the market was coming down. Uh, McDonald's was, com was coming down. I had a 50 cent target, 50 cent stop loss. It was very, very close. It was very, very close. Um, it came all the way down to. 68. Well, I was looking for 40 something th cents, another 10 cents or so. I could have probably had my partial, but then again, moved higher, drifted higher, stop over 209.50, which I was right to put it there because you see what happened. I mean, it came down a bit, but then look at where it is right now. So McDonald's failed. The market is kind of going the same direction. You see, it's not really going anywhere. We did move to a new low, but it kind of failed. Now going sideways, that's why McDonald's does not. Uh, come down, I guess. Anyway, lower size whenever you get to the point where you have two good trades. Keep the money close to your chest. Don't give it back to the market. I've been so, in so many years when I was trading, I've been at that point where I was making money at the beginning and then end of the day, I was red. I know it happens to you. I know it happens to many of you because I've been there because it happens to everyone and since it does, just think about what you should do when you come to that point. Don't get overexcited when you make money. Instead of lowering your walls and taking more risks, like as if you were a gambler, for example, you need your walls higher. You need to build higher walls. You need to be more careful. You need to hold to your money. You need to realize that you're feeling a little bit uh, too happy or um, you know you, you're feeling like you're invincible you're feeling like you could make more money that is usually not the case the first few trades you take are usually the better ones therefore lower your size keep the money close to your chest 
and finishing green territory and I had two small losers really so I'm happy to finish $1,800 and thank you very much for watching and being here with me today and I'm sorry I'm not at my best I am sick for quite a few days now hopefully we'll be better in a few days and um, I'll see you day after tomorrow bye traders thank you for watching our video before you go we invite you to join the TradeNet trading room for a free 14-day trial TradeNet has educated more than 30,000 professional traders worldwide since 2004 and its trading room is one of the world's leading trading communities. Click here to start your free trial. If you like this video, please subscribe to our YouTube channel where you can view many more stock trading videos. Questions or comments, please submit them below.